Selamat malam, <laughs> everyone. <laughs> I hope my <laughs> pronunciation is okay. Yeah, that's okay. Hi, <laughs> hi. I'm, I'm Indonesian web communities. Um, good evening, and my name is Shu Hirasaka. Um, I'm, I'm joining from here in Tokyo. I, I do um, web product partnership uh, at Google. And I I work um, pretty closely with the CMS partners, um, platforms, and uh, hosting providers. And basically, my my goal is that uh, websites become successful with the with healthy and secure and modern web technologies. So we very appreciate um, to have this wonderful opportunity. Um, Niagara Hosta team and the Indonesian uh, web communities. Uh, we are very excited uh, about today's um, today's session. So um, today uh, we are going to talk about um, a few topics. Uh, I'll be covering two items: um, core web, web vitals and site kit. Uh, core Web Vitals is um, a set of three measurements for uh, websites performance and the site kit is a uh, Google's official plugin for um, WordPress to, to easily check um, the summaries of uh, your website's key data and um, yeah I'll go through the, the concepts of the both um, both items are Core Web Vitals and site kit and then um, how best you can benefit from them uh, with uh, a few case studies and um, a demo. And then uh, my colleague uh, Ian here will provide you with some technical deep dive uh, for two links and uh, as well as um, Hedian and Ivan uh, will take you to the um, exciting um, discussions, q and minutes later on. Okay, um, Ian, so if you go to the next slide, Okay. Yeah, next slide, please. Yeah. Okay, first off, Quai Web Vitals. Um, this is basically a set of measurement uh, to assess your uh, website's health. Um, Google Chrome team uh, has announced um, Quai Web Vitals this um, late uh, 2019. So it says basically um, we, we are focused on uh, three key areas of user experience for um, for high quality um, experience. Um, the first one is it happening. So basically, we are looking at lo the loading speed. Uh, speed. Um, so did the, the navigation start successfully? Um, has the server responded? Um, so the the second uh, area is uh, basically measuring the responsiveness of your of your uh, website um, to see if your site responds well to your user's actions, such as uh, scrolling, clicking, and typing. And then the last one, is it delightful? Uh, it's basically um, looking at the stability of your uh, site page. Um, are the interactions smooth and natural? And, and they also it's checking if the if page doesn't shift. Next slide, please. So with these three areas, um, we we set a metric for, for each, um, and each metric has its own threshold. Um, uh, Ian, um, do you have, can you go back to back one slide? Oh yeah, that, that slide, okay. Um, yeah, so we have these three metrics for, for each um, areas. So how it works is that um, your web page is assessed based on your, um, your, your score against these three metrics. For example, uh, if your page's loading speed is faster than uh, 2.5 seconds, uh, your, your site is um, assessed as good with this uh, green color. And if it takes um, lo longer than three seconds, then, then you get yellow, which is um, adequate. Okay, so yeah, this is the basic concept of the, um, the how Quarry Vitals works. Okay, 
then let's take a look at a bit more details uh, of each metric. The first metric is for the loading area. Uh, it's, it's called uh, largest content for pa uh, paint, LCP. Um, it literally measures loading performance, um, basically to measure how quickly the, the main content of, uh, of our web page loads and if it's visible to users. So basically it's a, a report of the, the render time of the largest element of the page. Um, for example, um, the such element would be large hero image, videos, banners, uh, large text blocks, those, um, those elements. And to provide a good user experience, your LCP score should be within 2.5 seconds uh, of uh, when, when the page first uh, starts loading. So you, you get um, good. Um, next slide, please. The second metric is for the responsiveness of a responsiveness area. Uh, it's called first input delay, FID. Um, it is measurement of the, the time it takes for the for the browser to actually respond to the first time uh, first time a user provides input on a page. So that um, um, that ranges from clicking, uh, scrolling typing text and how your website um, actually respond to your to your input. Um, this is very, very important to, um, to to look at um, FID because um, it gives an um, indication of the user's first impression of your site's responsiveness. Um, so solutions includes uh, things like uh, loading less JavaScript um, upfront and code scripting and yeah, and also um, yeah, anything over 300 milliseconds is uh, perceived by a user as a poor experience. So you get you get this uh, red signal. Uh, anything above 100 milliseconds uh, is good. Next slide, please. The third metric is called uh, cumulative layer of the shift, C, uh, CLS. Um, it's, it's basically is a metric for uh, page stability. C, um, CLS measures uh, the amount that the elements within the viewport move around during, during the load. Um, if, yeah, I think it's, it's um, okay, it's easier to look at the, the um, this is animation. Um, yeah, if you could, quickly go to the next slide. Okay, so this is an example of when layout shift occurs. So as you can see, um, you might have this um, unpleasant experience where elements in the, in, the, in the page move around because the page is not um, fully loaded. So the contents are still moving around, shifting, and then you ended up accidentally clicking something something you didn't mean to click, um, like um, add um, and banner and some some button. Um, yes, going going back to the previous slide, please. Yeah, so basically, with CLS, you're you're measuring um, this this kind of um, experience, how much content. Um, actually moved and how far it moved. So to, to, to provide a good user experience, um, your sites should have um, CLS of uh, less than 0 0.1. Okay, next slide, please. Yeah, so that was um, basic overview of Core Web Vitals. And also Core Web Vitals now becoming a part of um, Google searches ranking signals. Um, as you can see here in, in, the, in, in the diagram, the, the gray boxes, uh, some of the existing elements of the Google search rank, ranking signals. Uh, for example, if, a, if your site works well with uh, mobile phones, um, if, if your site uses safe 
um, protocols like uh, HTTPS. And, and then now from June this year, we are adding core web vital metrics, the uh, three green boxes you see here, uh, which are the, the web, met, web performance metrics um, to this ranking signals. So now we are, we are in the process of making this change um, since this June, and we plan to complete the change 100% of Chrome browser by, by the end of August. So what, what this means is that um, providing high quality site performance and user experience is uh, getting even more important for um, SEO context as well. Okay, so that's the um, core of vitals and um, it's the, the recent change to um, Google searches uh, ranking signals. Okay, then maybe on um, to the next part, which is site kit. Okay, um, yeah, next slide, please. Yeah, the site kit is um, Google's official WordPress plugin. Uh, this is a free plugin, and you can you can install um, either via WordPress and plugin directly, or via Ni Niagara Hoster uh, services. Um, yeah, next please. Yeah. So what you can do with SiteKit is basically um, you can get a quick and easy access to these Google products, and check a quick quick summary of these. Um, these these tools uh, in one single page. So basically, you don't you don't you don't have to open multiple windows for for each tool or uh, multiple tabs. Basically, you you get everything. It's one single page. It's it's very easy. Um, for example, you can you can check a search traffic and information, the SEO data and the user user's behavior, um, how well your, your, your site performance is and uh, monetization data. If it, yeah, if you, if you have ads on, on your page. Okay, now let me do a um, um, quick little demo. Okay, let me switch the screen to my screen so that I can, um, Show my demo. Hang on. You cannot start sc screen share while the other participant wait. is. Okay, I think. Okay. Yeah. Um, wait, Ian, can you stop share sharing? Yeah, stop sharing. Oh, okay, got it. And then, right. Um, Okay, I'm sharing my screen. Are you able to see my screen? Yes. Fantastic. Okay, so this is my this is, this is my WordPress dashboard, and on your on your left hand side you see um, a little site kit. Oh, Google G logo. Uh, let me open. Uh, Make it wider. Yeah, this one. Yeah. So if we if we click on that, um, it gives a nice one page summary of your website. Um, from the top, you have user traffic data. Um, the summary from the Google Analytics. Um, you are seeing the, the number of visitors. Um, hang on. Oh yeah, actually this, yeah, this is a, um, yeah, the top of that um, site page. So yeah, you, what, what you're seeing is uh, um, the summary of um, Google Analytics data. And yeah, you see the number of visitors here and Yeah, 
and how they came to your site. Um, if it's via search, so um, like organic search or directly um, linked or via social medias. And then also you can check the, quickly check the, the location. Um, because this is, um, this is our uh, sample website, um, which is based in um, Iran. So, so that, that's why uh, you are seeing many um, access from Iran. And you, you can also check um, what, type, what types of devices your users um, come into your website. Yeah, so these summaries um, you're, you're getting from um, Google Analytics, very easy. And then here you're seeing SEO data summary from Google Search Console. Um, things, things like the, the number of clicks, uh, impressions, and which pages are popular and what keyword your your users use to get to your website. Yeah, so here you're, you're seeing the, um, the list of um, articles, blog posts, and yeah, this is the, the keyword they used. Yeah, this is the, the, the contents um, in the popularity order. And then here you are you're seeing the you're looking at the uh, uh, your site site performance aligned with uh, core vitals metrics which we we just went through earlier and uh, the three key metrics the uh, loading speed responsiveness and stability um, yeah if you look at the uh, largest content content for paint, uh, it's red. So this means this site is slow. Uh, so it gives you uh, some several recommendations on how, uh, how to improve your website. Uh, for example, um, minimize the, the size of your image, um, optimize, and remove the um I, I use javascript yeah things like that yeah so if you, if we click on this and you get more um more details um um suggestions and see uh here you, you're supposed to see uh, monetization data from uh, google adsense however uh, the the demo site we are using uh, doesn't have an ads on, on on the page, so, so that's why it's not showing. But if you have ads on your website, uh, it should be showing the the summary of um, your monetization here. So yeah, this is a quick um, summary of um, you know this is this is what it looks like on on, on site kit. It's, it's very easy, and if we click on here, um, go to settings. Yeah, you can you can very easily um, add another Google tool by going to uh, here. So yeah, this shows some um, um, another Google tool that's available to uh, to be added to to your to your site kit. So with um, just a few a few clicks, uh, you're done. You, you get you get Tag Manager, and here. Uh, it's, it's showing a list of Google tools that's already being added to your um, site kit. Okay, um, Ian, could you show the presentation again? Yeah, thanks mate. Yeah, next page. Yeah, next, ne yeah, next page, next, yeah, next slide. Yeah, so this is a, um, a summary of 
monetization, which I couldn't show because the, the, the demo site we use doesn't have um, ads on, on the page. But if you have, it should look like this. So you, um, I, it gives a summary of uh, how, much, how much money you made via um, advertising on your website. So this data is coming from uh, Google AdSense. So it's, yeah, as, 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 as you saw, the, everything is in one single page. So you don't, you don't have to open seven different um, tabs or windows. Everything you can check in one single page, very easy. And yeah, if you, if you want to um, have more detailed data, you, you just um, click on the, um, the actual um, AdSense page, then it takes you to the um, AdSense. So this is a um, very um, friendly to um, uh, to less technical people who who just um, who just started um, having having its their own websites. Uh, it's designed for uh, beginners, and uh, yeah, it's yeah, it's also it can be uh, enjoyed by um, advanced users as well. Yeah, next slide, please. Yeah, so we have this um, um, pretty good testimonial uh, from many, many users. Next next slide, please. And now, uh, yeah, it's been only less than two years since 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 it's launched. But now, um, yeah, a lot of people um, installing and now it's becoming near nearly 2 million um, downloads and it's installations and, and growing more. Yeah, next slide, please. Yeah, so that's the, uh, yeah, that concludes my um, presentation. So uh, to, yeah, let's recap that Core Web Vitals is a set of um, metrics for your, for, for measuring your uh, site performance. And that's now become a part of Google search ranking signals. And I, I also talk about uh, SiteKit, which is uh, Google's uh, official WordPress uh, WordPress plugin, to to quickly and and easily uh, get a summary of um of your various site data, um, such as um, SEO analytics, um, performance, and monetization. Yeah, um, yeah, that's my presentation. Uh, thank you for listening, and. With that, I'll hand it over to my colleague Ian for more um, detailed deep dive. Um, Ian, I'll hand it, hand it over to you. Okay, uh, thanks, Xu. So hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Ian. I'm originally from Taiwan, and now I work in Singapore. So um, I also do like technical partnership like with like partners like Naga Hoster and I really like uh, quite exciting to meet all you like all you folks like I know most of you are sites owner you're using Naga hosters like WordPress event to set up your blog like build your own business maybe small e-commerce so I think it's quite exciting because we we know that that, that like a uh, web is something important we can reach um, every user around the world yeah and just like the last session, um, Shu has mentioned about um, Core Vital, which is a metric just roll out, right? And also he mentioned about like SiteKit. This is like a, a one service like toolkit, which is, has a lot of like uh, Google service embedded site. So using SiteKit can actually help you to easily go through all this dashboard and have insights, have uh, like statistics to know about your website healthiness and like the monetization. And there's a, actually a, like we have a good um, partnership with Naga Hoster. So therefore, for now, um, each of your WordPress actually already have the SiteKit um, plugin installed in your WordPress, and and it should be activated. So uh, for the next ten minutes, uh, me and my uh, colleague like Had Yang here, like he's a native like Indonesian, so he can also share information in Bahasa. So. Uh, we will like walk through like um, the the some of the step because like after um, you have this plugin you need to do some registration so these are the later, later we'll show you some step for the registration and if you uh, also have your 
computer by your side, maybe you should because you're looking at the live stream, then um, you can just like open your WordPress like uh, like backstage and you can definitely uh, just like follow us like step by step to register your so, um, your site kit if you haven't do so. Okay, so here we go. Um, so from the like the, the, the backstage of the plugin page, you should definitely see like, like some of these. So uh, you should definitely see the site kit by Google. This is the plugin we, we share about. That one is definitely be installed and maybe uh, already like activate, yeah. But we still need to do the registration step. So next song, if you click the site kit on your left-hand side, like tool panel, you may see this like uh, this screenshot. So uh, because like on their site kit is all Google service. So definitely you should like, like log in your Google service and connect it to site kit. So if you click the sign with Google, you will jump to this site kit page. And it's a very easy like three step to tell you how to um, activate, really activate your site kit. So after I click the sign with Google, just like normally how you like sign other website with Google, you will just see these like, familiar like screenshot like to 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 have some permission as allow and just sign in so after you're signing you're going to be at step one it's about verified sites owner because one important uh, google product integrated with site kit is search console some of you may definitely know that because um, from search console you may able to see like whether your uh, WordPress website is crawled and indexed by Google, maybe also sharing ranking. And we actually have like the core vital and page experience report on Search Console. So this is like one-stop service about all your site performance. So you need to like follow the first step to tell Search Console that, okay, so this is your website, this is your domain. So this is more like to do the verify process. So, uh, after you do the verify process, this has a couple of few ways, like, like adding one HTML to your WordPress, et cetera. So after you do the verify, you will go to the next step. Next step will be uh, allow like, uh, like the Google account data to be shared with the site kit. So just simply could, uh, click allow here, then you can go to the search, like the third one. So the third one is like, it's like set up your search console. So simply doing the adding your site, your domain, onto Search Console and therefore uh, you can finally see like um, the, the dashboard Shu has shared in the last session like your website, your uh, site kit which has Search Console on this on your WordPress uh, backstage of all the like data metric, yeah. So it will be, the result will be like this and this will be just like uh, some additional step. It's more like a new feature uh, release like from like release on site so you can definitely like we we will do it more like a like a form there will be some option for you to click then you can like set up your role and also like for your purpose you like set up this like wordpress website what are you going to like how frequently you're going to post your content so what's your goal to um to to have this website so this is also a one-stop play for you to maintain your site and have all your account like uh, goals and your um, happy being set up here. Yeah. So that is the part of the uh, site kits uh, that I register and set up to, you need to do like uh, all those steps, then you can come to this screen. You have the site kit. Also, we, I didn't like screenshot like the AdSense or like the GA or the page inside, but they will all be here after you do the registration link the face yeah uh hoping that's not like walking too fast but the step is quite simple so definitely please try out that like, on your own wordpress backstage okay um maybe slowly pass here for a while i think okay no additional question uh from the okay from the chats there's no question right if we, yeah okay maybe we can leave all the question to the panel. Okay, cool. Okay, so uh, after you have like your uh, site kit and search console activated, now it's time to move to work core vital. Like Shu just mentioned in his like uh, slide that core vital is like 
being incorporated with page experience. Page experience is one of the factor for your site to be ranking like uh, like topper or below on Google search. So this is something definitely also uh, controllable by site's owner, right? Because like you can do some optimization on your WordPress site to make the overall like page load faster. This is definitely can 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 be done by some technical or some plugin. So yeah, I just mentioned about like Search Console. You can see all your site healthiness. Yeah. So um, like from a web perspective, it's important to balance between like performance and monetization, right? Since most of you may be like blogs. So um, can take this like uh, architecture in mind. So you have the WordPress to help you set up the site. You need to balance between performance and monetization. Therefore, uh, we have the tool here, SiteKits. The site kit have the search console on it, which shows the uh, like site healthiness and overall indexing information. Also, uh, we uh, it's available to activate uh, AdSense on like uh, on site kit. So using AdSense, there are just a, also a few uh, steps to click, and it can easily like activate your AdSense account and also just directly insert we call uh, auto ads into your blog. So that's a very easy and like non-technical way to just to do monetization on your site. So therefore on the site kit part, we actually have the monitor and data also monetization part. Next part, we're going to talk about like uh, performance since we mentioned about core vital is important and core vital is correlate to your site performance and how fast the site is loaded. Does it like uh, become a good user experience? So next part I'm going to introduce is the uh, AMP WordPress plugin. So um, some of you may uh, been heard of like AMP. So AMP is like a open source uh, framework. It's originally originally built by Google, but it's now like an open source and Google has a team who, which continue like uh, contribute it. Yeah, there's some like, like, like fun myths, but like in the past people say, okay, um, it's like, the AMP framework, which helps like ranking, but from Google's perspective, it's actually about performance. And AMP is a neutral framework, which help like your site to easily accelerate page speed. So that's why after your site is like adopting AMP, it become a faster loading pages, and that become a good user experience to make user happy. So that's a factor we make like the performance as a ranking factor. So from here, we can easily say. Uh, the M framework is one thing can like uh, easily to achieve better page experience, better core vital, just like having the framework adopted. So uh, what we have for this like uh, the framework and this framework now is like currently built as a plugin on WordPress. So it can also benefit the uh, uh, WordPress like site owners because you can just simply easy simply install the plugin and later on you can uh, transform your site into M format. So this plugin has some few feature like it's automation. It's more like a factory. So you build a factory beside your original website. Therefore, all your web page, your blog posts will using this factory to transform into M format to accelerate your website. And like uh, CSS tree shaking and there are definitely a lot more optimization about web it has been done. Meanwhile, it's like a uh, optimized like serving. So it's it's like uh, as we I mentioned, it's more like a factory. So it's accelerate your page like from your infra from your your server side, and you can definitely do some more customizing like uh, having the M thing to put to some other places. And it's also highly compatible with the search console. So you can also see all this data on search console. The last part is the validation tool. So um, the M framework has like need to uh, follow some validation syntax because like we expect the framework to accelerate the pages. So those tool, those validation is like a requirement. Like we we make sure the framework have accelerated your page. And on the on the plugin, therefore we on the plugin we also have this like tool can tell you okay. So now does all your uh, M pages is validated? Therefore it can easily to fix the uh, issue if you saw some of your M page using this plugin being like to transform has some issue. 
Yeah, so um, beside like we mentioned CSS tree checking, we can see like all these um, like technical like wording, like okay, inline and size bound CSS or lazy loading or like the like resource prioritization. So for non like technical background, like sites owners, you may be a little bit like not familiar with all this, but these are just more like all the front end and web technique that can be used to uh, optimize your, your website, optimize how it's being loaded. And all these feature has already been built inside the M plugin. So simply just activate the plugin then you can get all the benefit from these features. Okay, so just like we can take a quick look on like how this uh, plugin will be looked like. So after you install the plugin, you activate it, you click on the left side panel to 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 like uh, see the M plugin. So it will have a simple step-by-step -step tutorial here. First, like it's very really, like, I think it's very friendly. I like, just let you select whether you are more like a developer or tech savvy, you like to do most of the config by yourself or like manually do some customer customization on the plugin on the app, or you're just like a like a like blogger, like like who people who more like uh, specialize in writing contents. Then you may just select the non technical non technical savvy like uh, option. Then you will be guided to another simple flow to activate the M framework. And also like. Uh, I skipped the template move because that will be something I will explain later. And also, um, things like most of you may use the theme support by WordPress, right? So it will also let you select some themes. Like it's just like highly compatible with your with with M. So so that means like if you're also using the themes here, then uh, you can simply turn them all into like M, like without like any uh, uh, cost. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to share about like the template move. So there are actually three kind, uh, three kind of moves can be set up in the M WordPress plugin. So one is standard, one is transition, one is reader. So first is like a uh, standard. So standard is more like it just transform all your like uh, blog posts, all your web page into M format. So that means like all of your page and like no matter it's from like desktop, mobile, like no matter where, where user like sees your, your contents, it is all in the M format. So that means like every page of your uh, web page has been accelerated by the framework. So you can select the standard mode like if your theme is already, uh, your theme and your plug, the plugins you already activate uh, if they are all like high compatible with the with M, then you can just like select standard because you will get the most benefit of using the plugin. Yeah, so theme just like here. The second move we call it like transition move. So a uh, transition move will like uh, still let you like uh, have your own version of your original web page, which is maybe like uh, produced by one of the WordPress theme. But meanwhile, it will try like as best as it, it can to trans transform those um, pages into end mood also. So for some of the pages, like the plugin cannot transform into M, then you will leave it as the original one. But if some of the page like it can be transformed, then uh, it will like show the M version of the pages. And there will be also like a uh, like on the on the plugins backstage, there's a tool to tell you. Okay, so for some of the page, uh, there are some like uh, maybe UI or some like component that the plugin cannot transform. Then you can do some manual like fixing, manual check to let the page fully transform into the M M move. So this is like provide some like flexibility can let you do some manual work on this, but still remains like, uh, still let you like remains those like pages like on your original version. This is the transition move. So this is like suitable for a uh, site owner you're using those thing that is not uh, like very fully compatible with them. The third one we call it reader move. So you can just think, simply think um, reader move as just like, like for example, you're like, uh, like a 
like blog owner or like a blogger. So mo most of your blog will be in the format like big title, hero image and content rights, and maybe some other like fancy features, some other fancy UI on the pages. And Reader Moo just take those critical part, the title, hero and like the hero image and photos and the contents extracted to a very simple end page. So it more like a static like end page and user can quickly read through the content in uh, under the rate uh, under the reader mood transform. So so user can actually uh, experience the fast like page loading when you're using reader mood to transform some of your content. The original of uh, original version of your uh, web page will different definitely like uh, remains there just like the reader mood is just transform uh, fetching out extracting all those content to we call it like a reader post yeah so this uh, mood is benefit for those who are really not tech savvy so you just like from previously we see a step right just select the reader mood and just just like select the non tech savvy then I think this move will be like default activated and you will have um, your content also serve in the reader and like version but you don't need to do any uh, further uh, manual setup on all these plugins. This is reader move. Okay, so just like uh, here is just like a simple like table to to like um, reposting about what I just tell about like each like and each mood under the M WordPress plugin. So can just easily take a look here. It's also on the on the website. So no 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 need worry about like doesn't see this anymore. Yeah. So um, we mentioned about the like capability of about whether your theme like um, like fits with the M plugin. So I just take a part of the screenshot. So these are the mood that like um, all already highly like compatible with the M plugin. So you can definitely like turn on the standard mood. So there are actually more. You can check out uh, check out the M WordPress plugin official site, and it'll tell you like which are the themes and also which are the plugins that is suitable to work with, uh, work with M well. Okay, so um, we talk about the M WordPress plugin is like because it's a turnkey solution to um, accelerate your web page to meet like better core vital and better page experience. So just uh, a quick showing here, like these are all the tools. Like, uh, like for example, we can see page inside here. This is one uh, Google service already, already integrated inside SiteKit. So these are the tools that um, you can use to know your website performance. But just want to simply share. So uh, remember to do the audit like by yourself after you done the down the optimization, down the like turn on, for example, turn on the uh, M WordPress plugin, or definitely there is like a much more uh, page like speed accelerate like plugin on WordPress, on WordPress Marketplace you can try out. So just remember after you done the optimization, remember to like uh, measure it because when only you measure, you will know like whether you're doing this like, uh, like doing this, uh, Doing this shows cho 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 like uh, workable. You can know whether it really helps on like uh, your page acceleration. So you can use Lighthouse. Okay, you can use like page G inside. This is like a website. You can just put your URL onto the page inside website to see your like page does it load fast or not. Yeah, and here are like um, the reference. So these are all the guidance you can check after this call to understand more about AMP and AMP WordPress plugin. Yeah, so feel free to take a look at all these like uh, guidance. Okay, and I think that's mainly the part which I want to share. So how to monitor uh, do, I'm doing a, like a quick summary how to monitor your core vital. We have the search console on SiteKit, and we also have these tool and how to like optimize, how to accelerate your web page to work core vital. We have the plugin, and definitely you can try out other plugins like, on the marketplace. Just remember to measure the before and after to see whether it's like helpful. Yeah, and this is like the part I'm, I want to share. So the next session will be. Um,
shared by like Mas Henry. So I will pass the mic to him. Okay. Uh, selamat malam teman-teman. Uh, sini saya pakai uh, bahasa Indonesia aja kali ya untuk uh, teman-teman yang dari Indonesia itu. Oke okay, sebelumnya uh, perkenalkan nama saya Hendri Hermawan. Uh, saya sebagai front end developer di Diago Hoster. Uh, untuk kesempatan kali ini uh, saya ingin berbagi tentang uh, penerapan dari Bagaimana sih untuk membuat sebuah website itu bisa dibilang loadingnya cepat atau uh, secara performanya itu bagus? Oke, okay. next page. Oke, okay. yang pertama uh, kalau kita ngomongin tentang performance itu pertama yang pasti kita pikirkan yaitu loadingnya gitu. Bagaimana uh, antara kaitannya antara performance sebuah website? dengan loading dari sebuah website itu sendiri gitu. Dari misalkan da, uh, seberapa lama waktu yang dibutuhkan untuk membuka lamanya, seberapa cepat data yang bisa ditampilkan, terus seberapa lama kita bisa melakukan interaksi pada website tersebut gitu. Mungkin faktor uh, dan faktor-faktor apa aja yang uh, harus kita lakukan dan uh, harus kita hindari. Uh, ini uh, beberapa faktor yang uh, mengakibatkan website kita itu bisa dibilang lambat gitu. Yang pertama, uh, server performance is not optimal gitu. Kita uh, bisa uh, mengoptimalisasi dari uh, segi servernya. Yang kedua itu untuk pemilihan dari uh, aset-aset seperti misalnya kita pemilihan image uh, dari image size terus image uh, formatnya dan lain-lain. Kemudian data redirect and HTTP request. Ini uh, seberapa banyak dari terpati terpati yang kita butuhkan uh, dan kita gunakan dalam uh, website kita gitu. Dan yang terakhir load unedit asset. Ini uh, mungkin beberapa harus kita teliti lagi uh, aset aset mana saja yang harus kita gunakan. Misalkan untuk penggunaan Uh, image uh, CSS atau JS itu sendiri. Next, uh, ujung-ujungnya untuk uh, web performance kita balik lagi ke core web vital yang tadi eh, dijelaskan oleh uh, Shuhira Saka uh, untuk beberapa metriknya uh, untuk Google sendiri menerapkan tahun ini ada ada tiga. Gitu. Yang pertama uh, LCV, FID dan CLS. Uh, mungkin teman-teman uh, tadi udah dijelaskan juga oleh Syira Syaka tentang bagaimana uh, penggunaan dari ketiga metrik tersebut. Kan di sini uh, dari LCP itu menekankan lebih ke loading dari sebuah websitenya itu. Uh, untuk parameternya sendiri ada tiga. Yang pertama good dan uh, gross need improvement. Yang terakhir poor. Good sendiri itu kita uh, diharuskan kurang dari 2,5 sekian. Selebihnya, kemudian untuk yang kedua, FID lebih ke interaksinya. Untuk nilai good atau baik itu kurang dari 100 milisekan. Dan terakhir, untuk CLS, sama ada, ada, ada tiga parameter juga, itu good, improvement, dan pure. Untuk nilainya 0,1 sekan. Uh, mungkin uh, penjelasan dari tiga metik ini uh, sebelumnya sudah dijelaskan oleh Shui Lesaka di saya next dulu ini kemudian uh, beberapa tools yang biasanya kita gunakan di Nigoster gitu untuk uh, optimalisasi website yang pertama dari misernya sendiri itu ada uh, Lighthouse, Web Page Speed dan Google Page Speed. Bit inside SI. Yang kedua untuk uh, optimasinya kita uh, biasa menggunakan web dev, uh, speed curve dan GT metric. Setelah dari mission dan optimize uh, selanjutnya untuk uh, jangka panjang dan terus kita pantau yaitu untuk monitoring. Yang pertama uh, kita memakai dari Google Search Console 
Kemudian yang kedua kita memakai metabase dan yang ketiga pakai uh, Chrome UX report. Gitu. Next, uh, ini mungkin beberapa uh, contoh tampilan dari PageSpeed Insight gitu. Di sini uh, jelaskan ada beberapa parameternya yaitu CP, FID, LCP dan CLAC. Lanjut uh, untuk beberapa tools yang untuk monitoring kita uh, menggunakan uh, Google Search Console. Ini mungkin salah satu contoh tampilan dari Google uh, Search Console. Misalkan kita uh, ingin uh, mengimprove dari segi mobile. Gitu. Di sini ada tiga parameter. Itu yang seperti dijelaskan sebelumnya ada good, need improvement, and pure. Di sini uh, nanti uh, kalau misalkan teman-teman uh, biasa atau sudah menggunakan Google Search Console, kita nanti uh, bisa klik di salah satu uh, line ini dan di situ uh, terdapat beberapa informasi uh, URL mana aja sih yang yang seharusnya kita, uh, perlu kita improve kan gitu. Kemudian ini uh, contoh tampilan dari uh, Chrome UX report gitu. Uh, kita bi biasa menggunakan uh, yang pertama uh, data studio.google.com ini untuk tampilannya nanti ya, untuk untuk tampilan ini kita bisa uh, custom gitu. Terus yang kedua untuk uh, versi developer mungkin itu pakai CRUX, CRUX compare that notify .app. Ini juga uh, hampir sama untuk uh, untuk pengolahan datanya dengan data studio, tapi lebih lebih, lebih simpel aja sih dan uh, untuk lebih detailnya disarankan untuk menggunakan data studio. Kemudian ini uh, contoh dari hasil monitoring menggunakan metadata. Ini terakhir update kita di tanggal 3 April sih. Ini nanti uh, bisa dilihat untuk FCP-nya, uh, FID-nya dan lain-lain bisa dilihat dari sini. Untuk nanti uh, pertimbangan data untuk improvement selanjutnya. Kemudian setelah kita mengetahui apa apa aja, apa -apa aja sih yang mengakibatkan website kita slow, loading kita lama gitu, kita perlu improvement lagi. Yang pertama, saya membagi menjadi beberapa bagian gitu. Itu pertama improving HTML loading speed. Yang pertama itu keep your script at the bottom. Ini lebih ke untuk pengelod uh, load sebuah aset gitu misalkan untuk CSS sendiri itu nanti uh, ditaruh di atas heading terus uh, JavaScriptnya dibagi gitu, dan lain-lainnya nanti untuk third party juga uh, disarankan yang misalkan untuk uh, Google Tag Manager biasanya yang yang biasanya uh, agak berat juga nanti uh, bisa menggunakan uh, differ apa asing untuk uh, peloadan aset tersebut gitu. Terus yang kedua itu user external result. Ini contohnya seperti untuk penggunaan image uh, CSS, CSS juga bisa. Nanti kalau misalkan untuk uh, image bisa menggunakan CDN supaya lebih uh, cepat lagi dan lebih optimal. Kemudian yang terakhir Reduce the number of DAM element. Ini mungkin beberapa uh, dari teman-teman yang mungkin non-developer atau yang belum uh, melakukan coding atau gimana. Uh, nanti ini uh, lebih ke struktural dari sebuah HTML. Ya, gitu. Jadi uh, bagaimana membuat struktur HTML lebih singkat tapi dengan uh, tampilan yang sama. Ya. Next, uh, yang kedua itu improving JavaScript loading speed. Setelah HTML, uh, kita lanjut ke JavaScript. Yang pertama uh, itu sync or defer JavaScript. Uh, ini bisa opsional juga untuk teman-teman yang gunakan. Uh, kita pakai async atau defer untuk JavaScript yang bakal kita gunain gitu loh. 
Terus yang kedua remove unused JavaScript. Uh, ini the contoh dari uh, sebuah website. Nanti yang warna merah ini uh, JavaScript yang sebelum uh, bel belum atau tidak tidak kita pakai gitu. Sedangkan yang biru uh, JavaScript yang kita pakai. Jadi uh, semakin uh, kecil deh, untuk warna merahnya ini berarti semakin bagus. Sedangkan untuk yang semakin banyak warna merahnya karena uh, semakin banyak resource yang tidak kita pakai tapi tetap di load. Itu yang mengakibatkan nanti untuk untuk uh, performa website kita sendiri menjadi lambat. Kemudian untuk uh, selanjutnya itu code splitting. Code splitting sendiri itu uh, mungkin fitur yang didukung oleh bundler semacam webtech, rollup, uh, dan browserify. Uh, nanti ini untuk pemecahan dari se sebuah aset gitu misalkan yang biasanya kita menggunakan uh, satu satu aset misalkan app.js gitu kita bisa uh, membaginya untuk menjadi beberapa bagian tapi dengan uh, fungsi yang sama gitu kemudian setelah splitting kita bisa menggunakan uh, unify javascript dari semua data-data uh, resource javascript yang kita buat gitu uh, baiknya setelah kita masuk ke production itu kita minify JavaScript-nya untuk uh, mengecilkan dari uh, ukuran dari aset tersebut gitu. Misalkan uh, kita bisa menghapus komentar-komentar atau jenis baris spasi dan lain-lain di dalam JavaScript tersebut jadi uh, lebih lebih ringkas kayak gitu. Kemudian setelah HTML dan uh, JavaScript, kita lanjut untuk improving dari segi CSS-nya. Yang pertama, uh, kita bisa menggunakan different non-critical CSS gitu, yaitu uh, menunda file-file uh, CSS yang tidak penting. Gitu. Semua file yang uh, di load di awal itu sebaiknya yang relevan untuk di uh, di load di halaman awal. Jadi uh, file apa aja yang menjadi prioritas untuk uh, pertama kali kita load sebuah websitenya gitu. Kemudian yang kedua itu inline vertical CSS. CSS. Kita bisa uh, menuliskan inline CSS pada uh, mungkin di header untuk uh, mem mempercepat atau bisa melakukan optimasi uh, halaman apa aja sih yang yang perlu kita uh, poles gitu atau kita perbagus dulu untuk untuk tampilan awal gitu kita bisa menggunakan inline CSS uh, inline critical CSS kemudian uh, sama seperti JavaScript juga seharusnya untuk versi production CSS uh, bisa kita minify ya yeah. Sama seperti kayak tadi, kita bisa menghapus komentar, kita bisa menghapus uh, beberapa uh, spasi, dan lain-lain. gitu Supaya uh, nanti untuk ukuran filenya itu sendiri juga lebih kecil dan lebih uh, optimal untuk pengeloadan di uh, website kita. Kemudian uh, kita bisa juga improving image. Yang pertama, kita bisa menggunakan SRC set image. Di sini bisa menggunakan ada dua opsi. Yang pertama, image search. Yang pertama, untuk penggunaannya seperti line di atas. Kemudian yang kedua itu menggunakan picture. gitu. Lanjut, untuk optimasi image sendiri, nanti bisa kita juga menggunakan media queries. Untuk penggunaan media queries sama seperti set set untuk tagging-nya, cuman di sini nanti disediakan untuk medianya berapa. Ini misalkan image hero mobile, nah untuk 
maksimal maksimum width-nya itu 799 pixel gitu. Jadi jika uh, di load di resolusi 799 maksimum itu nanti uh, browser akan melot image hero, hero mobile gitu. Uh, dan sebaliknya kayak misalkan untuk minimal 800 pixel uh, kan web, uh, untuk tampilan laptop dan desktop nanti uh, akan merender uh, hero untuk uh, tampilan yang lebih besar. Kemudian setelah itu kita bisa uh, mengkompres uh, aset-aset tersebut gitu. Misalkan untuk untuk ukuran file dari image hero yang tadi uh, sebelumnya itu 4 MB atau berapa yang masih ukuran MB kita bisa perkecil lagi dengan image compression gitu. Mungkin teman-teman bisa menggunakan beberapa opsi pilihan. Yang pertama bisa menggunakan tool kompresnya untuk atau plugin juga uh, lebih simple lagi untuk online kompres gitu. Ini beberapa list yang uh, bisa teman-teman pakai. Uh, biasanya uh, saya menggunakan squash untuk uh, kompresi gitu. Kemudian uh, setelah kompresi uh, sebaiknya kita menggunakan beberapa uh, next generation image format gitu. Uh, ada SVG, JPEG, PNG gitu dan WebP. Uh, saya sarankan uh, dan kita uh, di Niagoster uh, untuk defaultnya lebih ke format WebP gitu, karena lebih ringan juga sih. Kemudian uh, yang terakhir ini uh, untuk kompresi uh, toolsnya bisa menggunakan ini juga atau uh, opsional sih untuk kompresinya. Kemudian yang terakhir itu lazy load. Teman-teman bisa uh, menggunakan native image uh, lazy loading dari Google, misalkan untuk penerapan di image, image loading lazy atau di iframe loading lazy, atau juga bisa menggunakan uh, plugin-plugin atau uh, tools lainnya gitu, misalkan uh, lazy size dan dan lain-lain sih. Yang terakhir uh, ini improving font. Improving font, eh, improving font uh, terbagi menjadi enam di sini uh, ada misalkan satu uh, kita bisa menggunakan 2 sampai tiga font untuk website kita. Kita misalkan uh, dalam website kita membutuhkan font Roboto, OpenSense, uh, Montserrat dan lain-lain gitu. Di, diharapkan uh, untuk menggunakan 2 sampai 3 gitu. Kalau misalkan kita menggunakan 5 apa 6 dan lain-lain itu uh, bisa membuat load dari website kita juga uh, tidak bagus dan mungkin tampilannya juga agak agak sedikit aneh gitu. Yang kedua itu di system font when possible. Sini uh, untuk di Niaga sendiri, kita mengcustom nama font mungkin. Di sini kita menggunakan Unita Sans. Ini, sekarang ini contoh untuk regulernya. Kan bisa reguler, bisa light, bisa bold. Di sini contoh dari penggunaan sistem font untuk Unita Sans reguler. Gitu. Kemudian teman-teman bisa menggunakan preload fonts. Setelah kita membuat web font, kemudian alangkah baiknya nanti untuk mempreload atau defer dari aset-aset font tersebut menggunakan preload gitu. Ini bisa teman-teman taruh di header. Kemudian uh, untuk opsional font format, uh, kita bisa menambahkan beberapa opsional formatnya, uh, WAV atau WAV2 atau mungkin SVG gitu. Lanjut, uh, yang kelima, font display. Ini uh, untuk uh, penerapan sebelumnya di 
Webfont untuk font display-nya kita sendiri menggunakan Squarespace. Dan yang terakhir font size property. Mungkin teman-teman yang biasa menggunakan website responsif, ini salah satu pilihan bisa menggunakan font size-nya pakai klaim gitu. Untuk yang pertama ini untuk ukuran maksimum biasanya digunakan di uh, desktop, laptop, dan large desktop. Gitu. Nanti untuk preferred uh, viewports-nya bisa menggunakan 5 atau 10 atau berapa, tergantung device. Uh, nanti untuk ukuran minimumnya biasanya nanti di load di uh, mobile itu bisa menggunakan terkecil misalkan di sini 16 pixel. Gitu. Kemudian uh, improving conversion. Setelah uh, kita optimalisasi dari segi HTML, CSS, CS, image, dan font, uh, yang terakhir untuk segi uh, kom kompresi itu uh, improving lebih menekankan uh, ke kompresi. Yang pertama, kita bisa menggunakan basic compression atau bisa menggunakan uh, broadly compression. Ini uh, contoh untuk penggunaan broadly compression dari uh, website Yagawaster sendiri, uh, broadly is enable, dan uh, cukup lumayan untuk, untuk kompresinya dari original size-nya dari 156B uh, menjadi 31KB. Gitu. Kita bisa menghemat 79,75% uh, untuk kompresi dari sebuah website tersebut. Gitu. Ini mungkin beberapa uh, rekap atau intisari dari uh, penjelasan di atas gitu misalkan untuk LCP, FID dan CLS kita bisa uh, mengikuti parameter-parameter sebagai berikut itu. Misalkan improve the time to first byte untuk uh, peningkatan uh, nilai FID gitu, yes, SDN untuk LCP default JavaScript dan lain-lainnya uh, mungkin teman-teman nanti uh, bisa cari tahu atau bisa pelajari lebih lanjut uh, untuk FID-nya sendiri nanti uh, bisa uh, untuk optimalisasi di file JavaScript, remove unused JavaScript, minify juga, uh, async dan refer, compare, compress. Ini uh, yang terakhir tadi compress uh, gesip atau broadly. Gitu. Terus yang terakhir Uh, CLS ikut with the high size attribute ini biasanya digunakan untuk uh, di image gitu misalkan uh, di hero image atau di card image nanti untuk uh, penambahan weight and height di uh, struktur HTML-nya gitu. uh, preload font juga kemudian lebih untuk teman-teman yang mungkin uh, menggunakan ads gitu misalnya teman-teman dari media apa yang nanti bisa uh, mempengaruhi skor untuk CLS yang uh, karena untuk untuk tampilannya biasanya uh, setelah beberapa load uh, tampilannya akan berubah karena uh, di situ terisi uh, ada slot iklan gitu bisa uh, mempelajari untuk uh, manage space-nya itu untuk MPJ kayak gimana untuk akunnya gimana Kemudian, uh, ini mungkin uh, beberapa referensi untuk teman-teman yang ingin belajar tentang web performance, web vital, uh, bisa uh, mengunjungi beberapa tautan berikut. Hmm.